Great, and uh, here we are live from Synthesis 2012, a uh, global gathering here at Chichen Itza, a uh, transformational celebration and planetary synchronization. And uh, I'm very happy and honored to have our very esteemed, respected, loved, and adored uh, author and spiritualist with us this evening, Don Miguel Ruiz. So thank you. Oh, it is a great, great pleasure. I'm very, very happy. This is a great, this is a great celebration. Thank you. And uh, as many of you may or may not know, um, we've been working on this event for uh, a year and a half. M me personally, I've been coming uh, drawn to Chichen Itza for 18 years to watch on the spring equinox the return of Kulkul Khan. So this event here is my personal pilgrimage of many years of uh, work and service and devotion to bring this fruit forward. So we just found out recently that over this broadcast we've had 20 million viewers. So for many of us to get to this point, there's been many obstacles, challenges, inspirations. Some people who thought they would be here did not make it here. Others who thought they would not be here were here. So can you share a little bit about some words of inspiration? Maybe people aren't able to join us, but some words of inspiration to share in this, this spirit that we're all co-creating. Well, you were talking about Kukulkan. Kukulkan, as we know, is a great symbol. You know, the snake symbolizes all of us, humanity, but with the feathers with the wings. The wing is our imagination. And with our imagination, everything is possible. Then that snake, in a certain moment, it gets the wings, which is the imagination. And with that imagination, she went back to the sun. Only truth can reach the truth. Then every equinox, Kukul come come to share with us his wings. Today, a very special day, like we say before, is the day one of the new generation. Yesterday, it was the end of the Mayan calendar. And guess what? We are alive. Nothing happened. The world did not end. Exactly. They just may understand that <coughs> we create calendars to measure time not to make prophecies just to measure time but we humans love to create prophecies we can create great prophecies which is okay but when we go into superstition into fanaticism we expect it for the world for the end of humanity a big catastrophe that will happen and it's just like the y2k nothing happened well yesterday nothing happened for the all the prophecies of the people who love to create fear and make everybody to feel panic but something really happened and this is the most important part the awakening of humanity the awakening of you the awakening of me the awakening of all of you and we are celebrating the the first the day one because it's a new beginning you know when we finish a year we remember the, the past year, the good things, the bad things, what makes us happy, what makes us suffer. <laughs> we try to avoid everything that makes us suffer and we plan for the next year. For the next year, I want this and this and that. Well, now with the end of the Mayan calendar, we can see what we did during thousands of years. It was great things, but also wrong things. But it doesn't matter. What is important is what are we going to do from here to the to the future and is the awakening of our consciousness the recovering of our awareness and what is more important what kukul khan means the return to the truth and for people who might be watching could you just share a little bit about yourself and your background 
And uh, I also know that you're an author of a world renowned book, The uh, Four Agreements. So can you share a little bit about yourself and also about your book, Spiritual Principles, to help guide the humanity into this new era, into this new consciousness of thinking as we enter the Ishla Bakhtun? Well, it's a great story, at least for me. It's my story, of course. In that story, since I was a child, I learned happiness from my parents. Then I went to medical school, I became a surgeon, and I was in a surgical team with two of my brothers. One is a neurosurgeon, the other is an oncology surgeon. In certain point, I want to understand the human mind. Then I decided to go back to the tradition of my family, which is the Toltec tradition. But Toltec means artist, the tradition of the artist. In that way, I have access to all my apprentices, and I really understood what the human mind is. And the result of that is all the books that I create, Four Agreements, Master of Love, Voice of Knowledge, and my son created the Fifth Agreement. Anyway, 2002 was a, a great uh, event in my life. February 28th, I have a massive heart attack. I was nine weeks in coma, and when they was ready to unplug, I awake, and the doctors tell me that I only live with the 16% of my heart capacity. And they told me that I never can do lectures anymore, teach, travel, etc., etc. But as soon as I kind of recover, I start doing what is my passion, which is what I'm doing right now. To just, well, that proved them wrong. You know, what I discovered completely at that time, it was not no longer a theory, is that suffering is just a choice. Because yes, my body was in pain, but I was enjoying life at every single moment. It was eight and a half years, not one or two years like the doctors tell me. But my body was getting worse and worse and worse. And that's the reason why on October 9, 2010, I have a heart transplant. When I wake up from the heart transplant, I tell my girlfriend, well, from now on, I will go wherever life takes me. After eight or nine months, the doctors tell me that now I can do my life again, that I can travel by plane again. Since then, I didn't stop. It's been 18 months that I was working, ongoing, traveling all around the world. I was six, seven times to Canada, all, to, all around the United States, six, seven times to Mexico. I went to Costa Rica, to Peru, to Colombia, to Ecuador. I went to Japan, to Australia, and like a three, four weeks ago, something like that, I came back from a journey of, from Europe. I went to 11 countries and, and all of that with the same message. And it was about yesterday. It is about to change humanity, to take the advantage and change our own story that we can reach our own happiness because happiness only comes from inside, not really from outside. Then this is a brief history of my life, which I know is not true, but it's based in reality because all those things really happen. But right now, living right now. Right. The bus is just a point of reference. And of course, for you, being here in uh, Chichen Itza is like a homecoming. Of course. I know many people uh, think that when they go to Chichen Itza and they see the pyramid of Kukulkan or Quetzalcoatl, they think it's a Mayan pyramid. But mm -hmm. actually, the Mayan pyramid is inside of the, what we see as the Toltec pyramid. Yes. Can you share a little bit uh, about the story of, the, of Chichen Itza and of the Toltecs and the difference between the Toltecs, the Maya, and also that there's also a Toltec and Aztec prophecy of the fifth sun. Yes, well, uh, this is very interesting. So in Chichen Itza, you can see two periods of the Mayan history. You see the old Mayan Imperium in one side of Chichen Itza, but in the other side of Chichen Itza, you see the mix between Mayans and Toltecs, which create the second Mayan Imperium. And in that part, you see the observatory, the pyramid of Kukulkan, that in, in Teotihuacan and Tula is the, the pyramid of Quetzalcoatl. It's exactly the same, the only that, that changes the language, but the whole meaning is exactly the same. Then as we say, Toltec means artist. Then it was not a conquest, it's not a, a, 
a, con, a confrontation. No, it was a merge of the truth. And that changed so many things. In the same way that Mayans create the Mayan calendar, the Aztec creates the, the, the stone of the sun, which is the Aztec calendar. And they're very, very similar. Both are made by artists, which means by Toltecs. And that is so amazing. Yesterday I was in Teotihuacan and I did a wonderful ceremony. And I asked for the healing of the world, for the healing of humanity, and to help us to change ourselves to become what we really are, to become one with the one who created us. I think it's working. It is working, <laughs> of course. Oh. Of course it's working. And I know so many people uh, all over the world have been inspired by your book, uh, The Agreements. Could you just share really quickly what those are and to give our oh. uh, our viewership a little bit of some spiritual food well, that they can use in their own daily life? Definitely. Well, the Four Agreements is the introduction of a new way of life that is very old, of course. The introduction of the way of the artist. Toltec means artist. Simple Four Agreements change completely our life. If we practice the Four Agreements, few years later, just by itself, the Fifth Agreement comes to us. I know, agreement number one, be impeccable with the world. You are your world. The reality that you create, your story is made by words. You are your world. Don't take anything personally. Because the way that you create your world, everybody around you, they also create their own world. That's, that's why whatever they talk about you is talking about the secondary character of their story. Because they really don't know you. If you agree with them, then that will affect you. Don't make assumptions. Since we have knowledge and we learn to think, most of the things that we do tell to ourselves, there's just assumptions. And we create so many dramas with that. <laughs> My favorite one is always do your best and the reason is because everything that we humans create first exists in our imagination and with the action we make it real. This is how we create all the civilizations that exist on earth like Greeks, Romans, uh, Egyptians, uh, Israel, India, etc. Toltecs, Mayas, who cares? First exists in our imagination and with the action we make it real. It's exactly what's happening right now. In our imagination, we imagine already how humans, how humanity will be. And we are going in that direction. Of course, we don't expect that it will change from one day to the next, or next year, or 10 years, or 100 years. But we're going in the right direction. And the fifth agreement is be skeptical, but learn to listen. Be skeptical. Don't believe me, don't believe yourself, and don't believe anybody else, but learn to listen, because this is the key. When you listen, then you learn from everyone what will work in your life, and what doesn't work for your life, you just put it in the trash, you don't have to believe it. With that you gain respect, and you respect yourself, and with respect you find your inner peace, you find your joy. You become authentic what you really are. In that way, once that you get it from yourself, then you respect your family and your family will be great. And then do whatever you work, business, whatever, and it's multiplying. Let's keep growing and growing and growing. And of course, your words are inspiration for many people. Um, just for our viewership that might know, there's many people who are inspired by your words. I know we were we were we were working to possibly bring Carlos here <laughs> to the event, so we want to we want to reach out to Carlos and hopefully inspire you to join yeah. us in the future. Carlos, and my brother, hello, I love you, and I wish the best for you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> you know, I know you're having a great time with your family. You are so humble. You are a wise man, and you are my brother. You have all my love. And the last thing is, to give us an understanding, I know in the, in the Toltec and Aztec tradition of the sun, and we've had the nice sun image, the sun calendar with Donatio uh -huh. uh, as our backdrop for the stage. But in the fifth sun, what is the, the, the teachings associated with the fifth sun and the consciousness and the, mo and the next movement? 
Well, <laughs> the fifth sun is a preparation for the awakening of the consciousness. The sixth sun is when the consciousness awakes and in that way we compare the entire humanity with a giant because we all together we create humanity which is a giant but the giant is been sleeping for so long and he's having nightmares but also good dreams with the sixth sun the awakening begins just like the giant awakes did they call me did they just call me Okay. No, they're talking about you. <laughs> oh, I think. loves you. They're mentioning your you know, I think that they want me to go and talk again. <laughs> anyway, if we can't get enough. <laughs> oh, God is so wonderful. Then the sixth sun is the awakening of that giant, the awakening of humanity, and this is exactly what we have in our mind, and it will happen very soon. We will see that humanity will be changed because it's changing right now. Well, I want to thank all of you for, for joining us on this webcast. And uh, I want to thank all of the amazing people that helped pull this event together here in the Peace de Pueblo uh, at the entrance of the Chichen Itza uh, archaeological site here in the Yucatan of Mexico. We want to also encourage people, one of the amazing things that's been happening during this event is we started to uh, create a network we put up a website because not only are we here gathering in Mexico but all over the world people are gathering at this time then join us in that celebration all around the world and that celebration is not just today this today is just the beginning of the celebration the celebration is every single day for the rest of your life then we are here to celebrate life don't forget that we are here to celebrate life and every single moment is a moment of celebration. You guys have all my love. Yeah. We want to encourage uh, you to come to our, our page World Unity 2012 because we know that this is an initiation, mm -hmm. a doorway into a new way of collaboration and thinking and experiencing and communicating. So on World Unity 2012, not can only people watch our broadcast, but they can also join like a Facebook they join a directory of many people around the world who are committed every day in working together and collaborating. So in the future on World Unity Network, we'll be doing more broadcast of conscious content. We'll be having various uh, interviews, plus making this directory available so you can connect these points of light, the members of our community with each other to become aware about the projects that people are doing and becoming a living expression of this new consciousness. We are the new consciousness. So, again, uh, I want to thank all my staff that has worked over the last year to help bring this event together. Our incredible technical team <laughs> who has been working uh, day and night to bring all the various elements together. I want to thank Hugh, our tech coordinator, uh, to help make sure everything is dialed in. Michael Short, who's been a really essential part through Peace Day Television. All of the artists, all of our wisdom keepers, all of our luminaries and emissaries, all of the teachers, and of course here, the Maya people who have opened their arms and hearts to welcome us here in the Peace Day Pueblo in the Yucatan. So again, thank you and uh, blessings to all of you. And before we leave, any last words of inspiration to our viewers? Well, it's very simple. You are the change. Change. And you will see how the world changed with you. You have all my love and all my gratitude. God bless you. All right. Thank you and blessings to all. And let's stay in touch through the World Unity Network. And I also want to thank uh, Darren, who's done an incredible job to put the site together. So many people to thank, but so little time. So we send our love to all of you. And a special thanks, Don Miguel, for taking time in your life to be here and to share your beauty and your wisdom and your heart with all of us. We appreciate it. We have a world of respect and we send with you all of our love and blessings. Thank you very much and thanks all of you. All my love. All right, in La Cash.